Dr. Kalianos, can you tell us about your experience with these AI algorithms and walk us through a few examples? Sure, I'd be happy to. We have a few cases uh, that we have collected illustrating the, the findings uh, during our evaluation, and I can just show those now to demonstrate how the features um, appear to us. So in this first case, we have a patient with ARDS who uh, had a newly developed left-sided pneumothorax on a routine morning chest radiograph. And you can see on this slide the critical uh, care suite uh, output here showing that there is a suspicious finding for pneumothorax and that's at the top of the screen. And then on the second overlay, you can also see that endotracheal tube localization tool, uh, highlighting the endotracheal tube and providing a distance from the carina. And so that's how the uh, secondary captures appear uh, to us in this particular case, highlighting, as I said, the pneumothorax and localizing the endotracheal tube. I think we'll take a look at another case. So this is a case of a patient who recently underwent lung transplantation. I was reviewing this case with a trainee um, who did not detect an abnormality, but we can see that there is in fact a trace right pneumothorax, and that was indicated as a suspicious finding by this um, artificial intelligence algorithm showing a, a potential application there in support of education. And uh, then you can also see the overlay for the endotracheal tube placement in this patient as well, and the distance from the carina annotated. So we have the original image and then our, our two secondary captures as they appear to us in PACS. And again, a good teaching case uh, for the trainee with whom I was reviewing the study. And then finally, a set of x-rays on a patient with heart failure who um, was intubated in, in our ICU. This first study, um, there is no pneumothorax, and we can see that the endotracheal tube measurement is provided two centimeters above the carina. And uh, if we advance to the next slide, we can see a subsequent radiograph performed for this patient two days later. Uh, now you can see that the endotracheal tube has been advanced very near the carina. And on that secondary capture image, uh, indicating the distance is less than one centimeter from the carina. And this is a case where repositioning of the endotracheal tube would be recommended. And we needed to make a phone call to inform them of that. And you can see that overlay indicating uh, graphically the finding as well. So three cases really showing uh, actual clinical cases where the um, AI algorithm was used in, in, in our uh, institution and the, the output and how it was, um, you know, how it was available to assist us. Okay, thank you for these uh, great examples, uh, Dr. Caliero. We're almost at the end of our session here. Uh, to conclude, um, I'd like to take a question from the audience. Um, this question here is actually a great one uh, to recap our discussion. And uh, the question is about next for AI and what problem should the industry tackle uh, going forward? And uh, maybe we can start with you, Dr. Kuleiro. Where would you sure. like the industry to focus next when it comes to AI and radiology? It's a huge question, and I think my answer is influenced by my practice setting. So I'm most excited about AI applications that can help support us at radi as radiologists in terms of increasing the efficiency of our workflow and, and helping us um, provide better care. You know, for their increasing pressures in terms of volume, um, sick patients, thousands of images. So I'm most excited about AI support tools that help us um, move efficiently through cases and identify those cases that um, um, that are high acuity and that need our attention more rapidly. So really workflow support, I think, is where I'm most excited um, in my personal practice. Thank you. Key areas, uh, indeed. And uh, Dr. Morgan, what do you see on the horizon for AI? So I completely agree with Dr. Kalyanos, and I, I think that the key for, for artificial intelligence in the next few years is getting it into the reading room, into the scanners, into the clinical workflow. Uh, I think we've seen over the past several years all kinds of amazing things in computer labs, in product demos, in, um, in research papers, all kinds of potential for what we can achieve with artificial intelligence. Uh, and the next major challenge is the translational step, bringing this stuff actually to the patient, 
to the clinician, to the radiologist, into the reading room, onto the scanners, into the clinical workflow, so that we can actually bring this to bear where it's having effect on, on patients. And I think that the challenges there include integrating artificial intelligence so that it's a seamless part of the digital environment that uh, physicians work in. So that's the electronic medical record for many physicians, that's the PAC systems for radiologists. And additionally, bringing those artificial intelligence uh, algorithms into the information environment of the, the clinical workflow so that they have access to and awareness of uh, the comprehensive information about the patient and are able to act on that context so that we start to know, for instance, not just that there's a pneumothorax, but whether or not it's a new pneumothorax, which is of even greater clinical importance to, to radiologists. And so I think that's really where we're going is bringing these things into the clinical environment where they can actually now have effect on patients. Thank you, that's, uh, that's very promising. Oh, uh, Alec, where is uh, G X ray heading with AI? What's next? So, as I think about the the future of AI development in G E X ray, you know, I'd be remiss if I didn't go back and highlight exactly what Dr. Kalianos was displaying with uh, the three patient case review that she had shared. You know, three to four years ago, if you'd asked me the same question, my response would have been that I want to see the technology that we're developing in the hands of clinicians and physicians who are going to make a, a meaningful impact in patients' lives. And seeing our technology add value to the workflow, add value in diagnostics, add value in triage. And I think we're hearing some of that now from uh, folks like Dr. Kalianos, who again, are using this technology clinically. 